a few years ago, man, I don't know if you remember this or not, but a few years ago, a song went viral called Keep It Real Dog by Snoop. And the song went viral because he took a few shots at Biggie on the song, saying that he was fat, whack, and had a dead eye. You heard about that, yo? I know you had to hear about it because it went viral. Everybody was talking about it. Yo, I heard he made, he had me, I made a, this song, but I don't know. I don't keep up with it like that, brother, to know. But I know Snoop wasn't right. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Because, you know, he was trying to call that boy while he was out there. And, like I said, if they somebody's your man, if they your man, brother, you know what I'm saying, you go see your mans in them. We had that conversation on the last thing. You don't, if, if Lil' see them out there two months and Snoop don't see them at all, at all, and then, come on, bro. He got on the, he got on Angie Martinez show, a Hot 97 radio DJ host, and said that he forgave Big for shooting up the Winnebago when other niggas was in there. He was, he wasn't even in there. Did the other niggas forgive Big? <laughs> Did the other niggas forgive Big? Cause I ain't heard not one of them say they forgave him. Yeah, man, that's real talk, man. So Puffy, man, um. He had a diss song called Stop Yapping, and he was like laughing and mocking Tupac the entire song. How did that song come about, my man? The one he did on uh, DJ SNS? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I know about it. Yes, I do. So how did that come about? Because at that time, Puffy, he was telling Biggie not to respond to Tupac, but he was dissing Tupac. He had a whole song going on a rant, laughing and mocking Tupac. And he was talking a whole lot of shit on that song. How did that come about? Well, he got with one of the hot he got one of the, one of the hot street DJs, DJ S and S from the Boogie Down Bronx. He got with him and they put it together. That's something Puff wanted to do. You understand? Puff Puff show you his true love for Tupac on that tip. You understand? How do you how do you try to emulate somebody that you hate so much. I never, I, I, I could never imagine that. If I hate a motherfucker, I hate her, I ain't trying to be like him. But that's that he, she shit. I can't get involved in that. Right, and I remember hearing, man, from people that was around Biggie, like Little C's, they were saying that um, Biggie, he didn't want them to respond to Tupac. And um, if they did, he was going to stop messing with them if they you know, made a diss song to Tupac. But um, Little Kim, she actually made a diss song where she was going at Tupac and Faith Evans, and the song was called Big Mama Thing. How did that come about, yo? Was Biggie cool with her doing that? You heard about that song, yo? Uh, I didn't hear about it, but I can say this one thing about Kim. When she was on the road, and any time I seen her, she kept it gully. She was gangster with us. Do you understand? So if she had a diss song and she talked about faith and she did that shit, that's Little Kim. L.A., man, um, y'all had an incident in L.A. with a Mexican kid, right? And he yelled at Biggie and he said, fuck you, it's West Side. This is Tupac and Suge Night City. And Puffy, he started chasing after the kid. What exactly happened with that, yo? It did not happen like that. Big was nowhere around. It did not happen like that. I wish that little Mexican kid was still alive. He probably, they probably killed him or something like that. I mean, just I'm just saying that, you know, since out in California, be the drive by the game, man. Because if he ever told somebody that story, that shit would be funny in a motherfucker. It happened. So how did you find out? You must have heard me say about it or something, or somebody told nah, you that? Nah, man, I was actually letting people know on Instagram that I had an interview with you coming up, a second interview, and I wanted them to send me some stuff to ask you, and this is one of the things they wanted me to ask you, and they wanted you to go into detail about it and let everybody know exactly what happened, so. We saw Dre and somebody else sitting on Melrose, and we was in a limousine. It was only me and Puff, right? And Puff get out the limousine, right? So I get out the, uh, on the other side. We are standing in the street. The limousine is double parked. This little Mexican kid is walking by. 
He say, Puff Daddy! And Puff like, yeah, yeah, what's up, what's up, man, what's happening? He said, fuck you, Tupac! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was, I was dying. <laughs> and the Mexican kids started running. And Pump just jetted out there. But that motherfucker was gone. I was like, oh, shit. So I'm running down. I got this bulletproof vest on. It's heavy in the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm running behind this motherfucker. And then it get like a, like a half a block long. And you know, California over there on Melrose. That shit was long. I was like, yo, then Pump just stopped. I'm like, yo. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? He told me, I don't know, Gene. I was just bugging. I said, man, you better stop tripping. You're going to run into something. Let that shit bug you. You fuck with that shit, you gonna, them niggas going to set you up. You're going to run into something. Keep on. He said, yeah, I know. I know, man. So we, he went over there and he started talking to Dre and whoever was sitting at the table over there on Melrose. They were outside. Dr. Dre. But that's yeah, story, that's crazy, man. That's that story crazy. is true, man. I, I wish I, I wish that little <laughs> man, that shit was funny in a motherfucker. And that was after Tupac passed away. Yeah.